So I'm Sherry Ann, welcome to A Nurse Like Me. of um, migration and issues, marital issues that occur during migration, the whole migration process is one that is of like grave concern. Um, initially, it doesn't seem like it's a big deal or an issue at all. But what you realize as you go along is that a lot of things that you had no idea about in the beginning of this whole immigrant nurse, you know, migration process, it kind of comes back to, to bite you in the end. Right, so just a little about um, what I do. I create content that helps immigrant nurses transition to life in the US. So there are many other nurses just like me who took that leap with their family to come to the US. And as a result of coming, you know, you disrupted your whole family structure in your home country. Um, you'd have left your job, your partner, your husband would have left his job or your wife for our male nurses. Woot woot. You'd have left your job, come to the US, and suddenly your entire family is in an absolutely new situation. And for some, it's a lot, and for others, it's just too much. So, you know, you're sold the story many times, you know, pack up your stuff, migrate to the US, life will be better. But no one discusses with you at what point that better will come, right? So, for our discussion tonight, I am going to be, there's some incidents, some things that will be like personal to me, I'll reference them. Others will be like from the experiences of persons I know personally and just things I've heard by the way. I can't exactly verify some of the information, but that will be kept at a minimum. For the most part, most of the persons that are migrating, um, namely from as nurses, mainly from Jamaica and the Caribbean are going to be females. Just based on our demographics as it relates to male versus female nurses so it will be the female who will be the primary spon um, person that is going that the sponsor is going to be applying for and then the rest of the family are like secondary applicants so the one huge thing that um, not much consideration is given to when nurses are being prepared for migration is what happens to your spouse and initially may seem like no big deal i'm gonna migrate to the us i'm gonna be working you know life is gonna be great yay yay but you know but again when would that happen so as as a nurse your sponsor does orientation for you depending on who is your immigration sponsor they'll do your orientation process um they prepare you for work life in the us on the other hand the major challenge that comes up is that your spouse is not prepared for like life and work in the US. The obligation as it relates to you know migrating as a family, you want to keep your family all together, um, will result in your partner, most most in most cases, your husband quitting his job. And you know, you pack up everything, some things you sell, some things you give away, and you leave with the hope of you know achieving the whole american dream but when you come to the us as i've said you are working as the as the female in most cases um you're working but your spouse in most cases is not able to find immediate employment and that does have a, a huge impact on how the entire family structure operates um in this new country new country new culture if your children migrate with you at the same time, you have children in tow as well, and um, they're adjusting to the new culture, and depends on how, the, the size of your family, it makes a whole lot of difference. If you're migrating as just two persons, husband and wife, because to initiate that whole process, you will, you will be coming as a, you know, as a couple. Husband and wife, if it's one salary, um, you're gonna be paid maybe between 26 and, upper limit like $30 as a new immigrant nurse migrating to the US and that's a generalization but for the most part that is what your salary will look like per all so if it's just husband and wife on one salary you will have an easier time adjusting and going through that waiting phase for your partner to get a job 
Now, if you are migrating with children, then the ages of the children make a whole lot of difference as well. If there are small children that require like a daycare, you're going to find yourself having life a little bit harder than your counterparts who are just coming as two adults. You know, as two adults, you can make it work, make it, make it just happen, rough it out for a little bit. Right? But when you have children, your mindset is totally different. You have, you're trying your very best to, you know, as a primary applicant, you're adjusting to your new work environment. You want to make your children comfortable. Um, then your partner, your husband or your wife needs to find, you know, find a job. And that's, that has been a huge challenge. Um, and there are many cases where, well, I've heard of cases where um, families have reached the point where one partner decides, the partner who is not able to find immediate or, you know, short-term employment in the short term becomes a little bit frustrated because if you're accustomed to working, taking care of your family, you know, making things work at home, you leave everything you know to a different country and suddenly you're out of work. It can really have a crippling effect, you know, on the family structure and even, you know, just psychologically, it can wear you down. And the stress of migration alone is enough. But when you are in a position where you don't think that you can confident, confidently meet your needs, that's a whole nother, that's a whole, you know, other level of stress that comes with it. So I want to keep this live really short for tonight, just to gauge the response and see if this is something that you're interested in, in hearing about in the future. But one of the things I have noticed that would possibly help, like would have helped in even my personal situation coming to the US with my family was um, being prepared in terms of, okay, so the job skills that you had, you know, the industry you were, you were working in, in, in your home country, jobs may not be readily available in that particular industry when you migrate to the US. And I'm meaning it's just, it, it spans a wide range as it relates to persons migrate to the US, their spouse, you know, maybe was a teacher, firefighter, working in, in banking and the hotel industry. You know, they left their business to come to the US for a better life. And just the initial phases, you find yourself, okay, so we left everything. No, no what? You know, I can't get a job. I have a, I have a degree in this, I have a master's in this, and suddenly no job. And it may feel a little bit demeaning or as if your whole family is taking a step backward when you feel as if your standard of living is threatened. You know, you'd have put off your aspirations in terms of you know, moving up in your company, moving up in your organization, in your home country. And in the US, you're starting at ground zero. It, it just requires next level, you know, like humility and just being willing to be patient, trust the process, you know, leaning on each other for support as you go through this whole transition period. So some of the things that um, families can do to prepare to move to the U.S., um, especially if you have small children, is be prepared. Um, initially, one person um, may have to stay home with the kids, just initially, until you guys get settled and adjusted and work on um, you know, applying for various jobs. And in terms of long-term preparation, this is like the major solution that I'm gonna leave with you tonight before I close this live is identify some jobs that are not necessarily the, like, the most popular jobs in your home country, but that are marketable in the US. And surprisingly, um, they really do pay very well. So I wanted to do a quick Google research. Just research blue collar jobs. Even if you, you are in banking or teaching, whatever industry you, you have been working in in your home country, just, just do a quick Google research on blue collar jobs. And if you're able to get us, um, some form of certification or experience in any of those areas, those that come to mind include um, plumbing, um, HVAC installation, electrical installation, masonry, carpentry, some of those skills that you may, you may not have been introduced to them before, but you'll find, I have found, I've seen where spouses with those skill sets, they find employment like almost immediately 
persons who are mechanics, you never believe it. Mechanics are very well paid in the US based on your skill level. And if you're able to um, have those skills coming into the US, you'll find that you are being paid at a higher rate than your spouse when you just arrive. Surprise! You know, but just look outside the box a little bit to see what, what can what you like. Maybe totally different from what you have ever done before. But this whole process is new to everybody. Especially if you weren't um, the type of family who was traveling back and forth to the US. It's going to be a whole new process. So just research blue collar jobs. Find something that you know suits your interest. If that program is not available in your, in your country of origin. What you can do. You come to the US with the mindset that listen. I'm going to use the money that I... I brought to the US, I'm going to you know, go back to school. And in going back to school, you're going to do one of those programs. And they're usually short-term programs, like a few months. And the entry, it's easy to get into for the most part. Um, another one that comes to mind is like installation of, um, what you call it now, like satellites or installation of, like, let's say the internet companies have persons who do their installation, the research how much those jobs pay if this is something that you're interested in continue the discussion on if you enjoyed what i shared tonight remember my my takeaway tip is to find something that you like to do one of those technical skills that you can use to transition to life in the u.s as a partner and this is like male or female i i, I must be honest i didn't do much research like on the female side of you know like you know things that require less physical exertion that um, spouses could do. I did not do that part. But just do your research to see what you can do to contribute to your family settling in the US with as little stress as possible because the whole process itself is stressful. So do whatever you can to minimize that additional stress. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. And if this is your first time watching any of my videos, I am Sherry Ann. My website is www.anurselikeme.com. If you go there, you will be able to download a free ebook that I provided in term, and it will give you information about things that you can do to prepare to transition to life in the US. Thank you for so much for joining me. And until next time, have a good evening.